If you search for CQRS, you're going to find blog posts that conflate CQRS with other concepts, making it seem confusing. I'm going to explain quickly what CQRS is, because it doesn't take very long, and I'm going to expose three of the most common myths that I constantly see or hear when CQRS is explained incorrectly. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post topics on software architecture and design in .NET, such as this one about CQRS. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So when you do a search for CQRS, like I said, you're going to find some blog posts that conflate it with other things. And you can tell that when you see this diagram. So this diagram is applying CQRS, but it's also applying other concepts and conflating them with CQRS. And they're generally described all as one thing under the umbrella of CQRS, which it is not. So let's define what CQRS is. In order to do that, we'll go to the person, Greg Young, who actually coined the term CQRS. And he did a lot of his writings in this time, this is from 2010, on either codebetter.com or on his blog, uh, his own blog of goodenoughsoftware.net. And unfortunately, both of those sites no longer exist, but because of the Wayback Machine on archive.org, you can get to some of this stuff still if you knew it was there, which I did. So this is the post where he actually kind of gives what I use as the definition. So I've kind of copied and pasted it here to one of my slides. And it states that CQRS is simply the creation of two objects where there is previously only one. The separation occurs based on whether the methods are command or query, the same definition that is used by Bertrand Meyer in command and query separation. A command is any method that mutates state and a query is any method that returns a value. So this is the exact code sample that Greg uses in that post. Um, I've added it to Rider just so you can see it a little bit easier. And he has the idea of a customer service with these methods on it. We have a make customer preferred, where we pass the customer ID, get customer, where we get a customer object back, get customer with name, uh, customers with name, get preferred customers, change customer locale, create a customer, and edit customer details. And really is what he's saying is instead of there being one object that has both methods that uh, return state and change state, we're gonna split these up into two separate things. So instead, we're now going to have a write service that has all the methods that do uh, mutate state, anything that changes behavior, and then a separate service entirely that all it does is return state. That's all CQRS is. That's it. Just the separation explicitly from one object that's going to return state and one object that's going to mutate state. That's it. So now that you know CQRS is actually pretty boring and not really that exciting, what actually is exciting is the opportunities and now the, the things that you can do that you're, because you're separating reads and writes that are shown in this diagram. So there's three things that are in this diagram that I constantly see conflated with CQRS that now you know have nothing to do with CQRS. So here they are. So the first myth that I constantly see is that you need physical different databases for the write command side. Uh, versus a completely separate, separate database for the query read side, which is completely untrue. So there's nothing really, again, stopping you from having the write side interact with the exact same database that your read query side does. It's more about a logical separation than it is a physical one. Now, the other thing I like to point out all the time is a view, if you're using a relational database, is really just a projection. So if your query side is mapping to the same tables that your write side is, or maybe you're doing some, you're creating a, uh, an actual uh, view of some of the data that's actually a projection, your query side could be using that. But there's nothing stating that you need physical different databases. So the second most common myth is that event sourcing and CQRS are the same thing, which they're not. So event sourcing is the idea of instead of storing current state in a database, instead what you're storing are facts, events. They're immutable. There's things that have happened within your system. So instead of, like I said, storing current state, you'd be storing kind of this stream of events of things that have happened that you can then derive current state from. So if you're thinking about a shopping basket, what you'd actually be storing are the events so that the basket was created, maybe you added a uh, product to that basket and then product was removed from that basket. And you can derive state at any point in time with these events. So the last myth that should seem probably a little bit obvious now is that you don't need to do any asynchronous messaging. So the reason why some of these have you have an event bus is again, because they were inferring with something like in this diagram that you were also doing event 
sourcing. And if you're not, then you don't necessarily need an event bus. You also don't need a command bus. None of this needs to be asynchronous. None of it needs to be messaging. It's again, just simply having two different paths for the write command side and the query read side. So again, there's no asynchronous messaging uh, implied when you're doing CQRS. So the kind of last thing I'll leave you with is from Greg Young's blog that was on goodenoughsoftware.net. And this goes back from 2012. And it's posting kind of other myths or other things that CQRS is not that I haven't covered. Um, it's not a silver bullet. It's not a top level architecture. It's not new, it's not shiny. Um, it will not make your jump shot any better. It's not intrinsically linked to DDD. Um, it's not event sourcing, we covered that. It does not require a message bus, we talked about that. It's not a guiding principle, CQS is. So again, CQS is the idea of a method should either return state or mutate state, not both. Uh, it's not a good wife and is learnable in five minutes. I think this might've took a little bit more than five minutes, but hopefully you get the gist of what CQRS is now. When you start applying CQRS, it opens up a lot of opportunities to do some other really interesting things. If you want more content around those things, let me know and I'll provide more videos. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos on software architecture and design in .NET, make sure to subscribe. Thanks.